What's up, people? Welcome to the flow. This is your man's Doc Rock, your community manager here at Ecamm, and I am still being a jury sequestered in Hampton, Virginia. <laughs> anyway, gang, we are doing the flow. This is the podcast where we show you the ins and outs of starting a podcast, but our approach is slightly different. We are on the video first way of doing podcasts. And this has been very interesting as of late because as we spoke about recently, YouTube has added a podcast tab, if you will, and they are still fleshing that out. But from the conferences that we've been to over the last couple of weeks and the conference that we're going to next week, I don't even know what week it is anymore. Next week. (laughs) Okay. Okay. We just had a whole meeting about this, like, 20 minutes ago. Anyway, the next next conference that we're going to, again, it's going to be a lot of people talking about podcasting, but from a video first approach. I will not sit here and pretend that we pioneered it, but we are definitely beating that drum. We're going to keep talking about it until it becomes real. Yeah, that's it. That's the plan. We're going to talk about it until it becomes real. Absolutely. We're, we're on like an event kick right now so we were at podcast movement last two weeks ago and See, next week we're either. coming i know yeah it's all a blur next week we're heading to content marketing world in cleveland the following week we're going to be at people of video in new york then we're doing leap into podcasting which you just saw a trailer for so hopefully you will join us for that because everything that we learn and that we're learning and everything that all of our friends and contacts know we are literally giving to you for free so there is not a better time to join us on this mission to get video first podcasts out there yes you know my favorite thing is i like when i hear commercials I like them so much that I start to imitate the commercials. So I can do that one too. Leap in the podcasting. Wait, that is commercial. Say what? So it's not, it's not actually a <laughs> real imitation because it's me. But uh, yeah, so this is going to be fun. Um, when we did our first flow, I actually got a DM from Janice, Janice Anderson Robinson. Janice had asked like sort of what is our flow for the flow? I gave her a brief rundown. I was like, yeah, it's real simple. We have a thing. We know we're going to come in. We're going to do our intro. And then if we have any promo materials or stuff to talk about, we'll do that. And then we'll do some basic sort of housekeeping, if you will. And then after the basic housekeeping, we will go in, do the show. And after the show, do Q&A. And she's like, yeah, but do you have that like in the sheet? And I was like, what? (laughs) Okay, so I happen to be a checklist person. I think so. I'm a checklist person. I make checklists before I travel. I make checklists for different things before I cook. I check the ingredients, make sure they're all there. I think it's a military leftover. I am a checklist person, but I never really wrote out what my show flow was because I just did it from memory, I guess. (laughs) Feeling, deep feeling. feeling, Yeah. Yeah, I guess feeling. But I find that even for my own show, because I got yelled at by Keely, (laughs) <laughs> I was like, look, dude, you need to do these things in a certain order. And I was like, okay. Mm-hmm. So I tried it and I liked it. And then Stephanie had her tool that was also designed to help you do a run of show, the virtual show maker, which was also pretty cool. So I've gotten, I think, into a habit of doing a run of show, even though you don't realize that you do a run of show. Does that make sense? I think so. It's funny. It's I feel like run of show or show flow or the workflow for your show. There are a ton of videos and just an insane amount of content out there, even just on our channel about the right way to do it. But it all comes down to really thinking through what you're going to do with your content. You know it innately. And I think that's the point that people get a little bit stuck on. So everything that we talk about today is absolutely applicable to what you are creating. But the important thing to keep in mind is what do you want to do with your content in the podcasting space? You want to turn it into an audio podcast and get it out across different channels, but you probably also want to be able to use that video in a bunch of different ways, use those audio clips in a bunch of different ways. And so thinking through how you approach your flow and and where the content is going is going to be really important to having a successful show flow or run of show. (laughs) Right, right. Okay. What do you really need in order to have a decent run of show? A pen and an index card. (laughs) That's about it. No joke. No joke. I have actually started working on what I thought would be the most universal for people in the community. So um, it's not completely flushed out. But for the people listening at home, I am currently on the screen showing a PDF 
that I've started to put together in Apple Pages, believe it or not. And the only reason why I started it in Pages versus some other tool is because I started doing this on my iPad, sitting in the backyard watching the barbecue grill. <laughs> that is it. glorious. Glorious. That was the only reason why. <laughs> There may have been whiskey involved, so look for any typos. But I was literally just sitting there watching the, the stuff on the Bobby. That was for my friends in Australia. I probably did that wrong. I don't know if Justin Brown is listening. <laughs> <laughs> but I literally was just tending to the grill. And so I had my iPad out there. And for some reason, I just thought about pages as a simple way to do it. But in theory, you can literally just start with an index card. Or, you know, Rocketbook is great because you can erase them. And it's, you know, more eco-friendly, if you will. Um, but yes, I just started throwing together a list in the pages. So give you an idea of some of the sections that I started working with. I wrote in my intro. So if I have any intro paragraph, you know, I left that blank because that mm -hmm. will change from time to time. And then what we normally do is in the past, if you watch the live tapings or watch the video version, even I guess sort of listen to the audio version, we'll have topic one, topic two, topic three. And then we'll go into, I guess, the, uh, a synopsis, if you will, a closing argument. I'm yeah, sorry. roundup. Yeah, roundup. There we go. <laughs> yeah, I was going into. I've been watching legal shows. What can you do? <laughs> and, then, and then we'll go into a brief outro, of which right now we still don't have a polished outro. But sooner or yeah. later we will get to that. Like this episode of the flow has been brought to you by Ecam Live, a product of Ecam Network. Ecam Live is the greatest live streaming software ever. If you yeah. are a Mac user. And then we'll be like, this show was produced by such and such and such, edited by Luis, Mr. Camera Junkie Wega. And then we can say things like using the tools of Ecamm Live, Descript, and Captivate.fm. That's a good way to do an outro, if you will. And of course, the reminder to everyone, and this is your reminder now. This is a demonstration, but it is an actual reminder, so you can do both. If you haven't already, go over to the iTunes podcast application and leave a review for the flow if you are enjoying the content that you are receiving because reviews and sharing are the best things you can do to support your favorite podcast. Absolutely. And it's really that easy. So, you know, the more formulaic and outlined that you make it, the easier it is to do all of your episode planning. We've, as we just said, have been traveling nonstop and attending a ton of events and there's a lot of other stuff that's going on. So there are times where we're thinking on the fly to get this show together, but it's really easy with this show flow because we know that we have the topic, what are the three questions that we're gonna ask and answer, and then the wrap up. And it makes it just so much easier for us to curate the content. It also makes it way easier on the repurposing side, which is one of the reasons why having a run of show is so important. If you want to repurpose the content into, let's say, a blog post or shorter video clips, if you have those three points or you, you know three questions that you're asking, Doc even makes it so much easier because he actually visually brings them up on screen. So it's just so easy to clip those individual points, right? So you need a podcast editor. That was from last week, right? Then we know when we're looking at this video, that's the point where we're going to clip it. That's the point where we're going to grab that transcript and be able to fit that into a blog post. It has made the repurposing and editing and kind of post-production side significantly easier and faster for us because we have this very specific flow and we stick to it every single week. Well, yeah, I think the other thing is certain things sort of become muscle memory. You just know, mm -hmm. right? And what I always like, when you get to the area where you have sponsor breaks, for instance, mm -hmm. I like when the hosts know how to segue into a sponsor break. Now, this is something that you're going to have to make a choice on. And I will try whenever possible to tell you when this is something that you make a choice on versus this is a hard and fast rule. Truth be told, yeah. almost all hard and fast rules are applicable to be broken. But the reason why they tend to be hard and fast rules is because they work. Now, my boss when I was in radio, Mr. Alan Oda, he always <laughs> said, never foreshadow a commercial break. Never, 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 right? And yeah, they don't day, want to lose listeners, right? Yeah, so. <laughs> because on the radio, when you're driving, it's funny now because we don't hardly do this anymore, but on the radio when you're <laughs> driving, Katie and I have a long road trip from Massachusetts to New York coming up very soon, and somebody yep. would come on and be like, hey, this is DJ David Hunt, and after the break, we're going to, as soon as he say after the break, switch channel. <laughs> like, I don't even hear the rest <laughs> of it because we know that we're about to lose that music that we're trying to listen to, right? 
So there is a way as you practice to segue your commercials without telling people that you're going to commercials. Okay. Mm -hmm. Telling someone after the break is a way to make them leave. It's a good break point. It's a good place for them to stop. And considering the video version of your show, YouTube, and actually I believe Spotify and Apple music as well, they do track session time. Session time means open the app, press play on a particular thing. If that yep. thing allowed a person to stay on the platform for X amount of consecutive time, it gives that person algorithmic oomph, right? So if your video, your reel, your TikTok, your podcast is the procuring cause of somebody sitting down and listening to a particular app or using a particular app for an hour, you actually get credit for being the person who started that, you know? Mm -hmm. So you don't want to give people a break point, like an easy run to the bathroom, grab a beer, change the station, <laughs> switch topics, if you will. So yep. think about that when you do your breaks. So say the script was a sponsor. Right now, they're just a tool that we use, but they're not a sponsor of the show. We can mm -hmm. say something about, you know, text to speech is getting really, really incredible. And you'd be marveled by how powerful text to speech is and what you can do with it as a way of expanding your brand or creating articles and the various touch points you need for marketing. Speaking of which, let's talk about the script. Natural, flowing, easy segue as opposed to, all right, we're going to take a word from our sponsor. Be careful of that when you put those things in your notes. I think that's hugely important. And we'll be, I mean, we are going to be bringing on sponsor ads and videos and things like that, predominantly to show you what the process is going to be like, as well as to just talk through, you know, what are the tools and the, and the other, you know, brands that we work really closely with on this show. So I think that'll be helpful. And certainly any questions that you have as, as we start introducing those, we'd be happy to hear. But yeah, that's a really good point. And that's one we don't often think about as much when we're kind of with our live streaming hats on. It's a little bit less common to do in like a live stream show, but certainly very common to do on a podcast. So, um, you know, planning that out, if that's something that's important to you, I think is really important. So, you know, maybe it's like, your flow is your intro, your welcome, your first question, ad break, your second question, ad break. Being able to really think through where those breaks are and how they flow is going to be important as you're planning out each episode. Nice. Okay. So something else that you might want to add to your planner, if you will. And again, people, you can do this in Canva, Pages, Microsoft Word, Google Sheets, whatever you have. It doesn't even have to be pretty because no one's going to see it but yourself. Right. If you like mm -hmm. pretty things, knock yourself out. I know if Michelle Lawrence was around <laughs> here, she would style hers up exactly perfect. But just mm -hmm. this is just some of the things you might think of. So the key elements, again, are I have the name of the episode. I have any guest information if I have that at the ready, because I might want to give my guest instead of my co-host. In this case, I would want to give her social medias and give your guests an opportunity to market or share whatever it is that they're currently using as their top of funnel. So for instance, mm -hmm. if Keely was our guest, I know that we know her, her channels and things like that. And she has two, she has her umpire thing. She has her discord for creator thing. But right now coming on the discord for creator thing, I was like, do you have a special promo or something that you want to do in the show? So get that information, write that in as well. I think it's helpful. You don't have to, these are some of mine. I put the date recorded and the episode number. And once I'm done, I write down the episode link because some of your podcast apps, for instance, Captivate, if you tell it these things, it will use that as part of the metadata when you go up there. So again, we got our intro, our topic, topic, outro. Leave yourself some room for notes at the end so that there's mm -hmm. any links or anything that you need to put in. But then... I like in that note section, a place to remember where something super rad was said or a great question was said in the past yep. couple of episodes. If someone in the audience, because we do record this live on Tuesdays at 12 p.m. Eastern, see what I did? Um, <laughs> I, I do a screenshot and I screenshot those questions because those questions might become something that we can generate an episode for later. Like this question. This question literally came from Janice sliding into my DM and asking me, hey, what does the show flow look like, right? Yep. And then something else that you might think about doing on that same sheet, if you have space, leave yourself your recording checklist and your editing checklist. And I think this is important because it's a reminder to you to make sure that your Ecamm is recording, 
If you have the RCP mm -hmm. running a backup or you're running a secondary backup, for instance, one of the things I pressed on the mic that I'm using today, I'm not in my studio, so I'm using the Rode VideoMic NTG. One of the modes has a safety channel. So I put the safety channel on just in case. So what it does is it gives you a strong left channel, but then the right channel, they attenuate it by like 10 decibels. So that way, if you were peaking or whatever, they could use the lower channel and pick it back up because digital recording nowadays, you have room to play. So do things like remember to set the safety channel. Remember to check the battery and the cameras. Remember to make sure that Katie is not Luis. <laughs> <laughs> things like that. So those are some of the things that you yeah. might want to add to your checklist. That never changes every episode because they're basically the same. But give yourself room that, again, if Keely was the guest and she asked for something very specific, like Katie, wear that sweater because, you know, they're Canadian. Represent. <laughs> they can do your thing. You know, Katie, you need a USA sweater now, by the way. <clears throat> I know, I do. I do. I need a USA sweater. I would say too, on that note, that once you have, you know, your handwritten or typed up or whatever your show flow structure is, and you are doing a similar workflow to what we are doing, where if you're starting with video, which we hope you are, or starting with live streaming, you can then build out your profile in a tool like Ecamm to be able to have, you know, all of your graphics, your guest name, you know, all of that already ready to go before you hit the go live or the recorded button. So it's like notes first, and then you're able to build it out. And then each week, it literally just comes down to being able to changing the co-host name back at the bottom, or adding in maybe a couple of different graphics or things that you're going to be talking about. But the structure is all there and doesn't change every single week. And it's in the right order. So you're already ready to go and you have those visual reminders. You know what your countdown timer or your intro scene looks like. You know what the main points are going to look like. It just makes sure that you're not going to forget anything and that everything looks exactly the way that you want it to. So having the notes is great. And I think is the absolute place that you should be starting, whether it's whiteboarding or writing or drawing, however you want to put them together and then getting them into whatever tool you're using each week to actually create a record or build that content is awesome so that you just have all of those templates ready to go. You're saving yourself a ton of time. Absolutely. I want to show something else real quick here again for the people at home. I am showing the PDF, but you can understand this just from the notes. One of the areas that I didn't put, and I think I should, because I just noticing a question from the audience, instead of this reflection section, I'm going to probably change this to sponsor section because that way I can remember to add any sponsor slash affiliate reads, right? Mm -hmm. So if I have any special sponsor or affiliate reads, I might put that there instead because that's a good way to remind myself to go ahead and say that. I know that I am often teaching the people for the Ecamm Live Affiliate. Again, if you are an Ecamm user and you're not an Ecamm Live Affiliate yet, you should do that now by going to affiliates.ecamm.com. It's a reminder because I've done many, many shows where I've completely forgot to mention my affiliate associations, yeah. which is one of the things that you can do to help you monetize your podcast, right? So when you're using something like Captivate or question came up today about epidemic sound, about what is the track that we're using, things like that. Add those to your show yeah. notes. But if possible, people do work better from the live read. So you want to say something to the nature of our intro music was Egg Rolls by <laughs> Joby. And I forgot the other person, but it's on Epidemic Sounds. And you can get that by going to Epidemic Sounds dot whatever, whatever your link is. Paul knows mine. He'll put it in the chat down there. Or at the end, y'all, I'm going to talk about gear or something. You might say this show is produced with, and you can find the full gear list for what we produce this show with in the show notes. Things like that. Those are great for yourself to make sure that you are monetizing what you're working with. It'll become more easy to, to have the energy to keep going. Let's put it that way. Those are always the questions that come up on on any podcast or on any you know video that you're doing. It's whatever you're talking about. People want to know you know, more about those things, especially if you're doing something that is tutorial based or you're helping people figure something out. I think it's not salesy as much as just a need. People want to know, you know, where that is. People are always asking, you know, what, what microphone docs using or what, you know, what tool we use to do that or how we're bringing this or that in. 
I think it's it's something that's perfect. And it, again, perfect to go into the outro, which we don't have yet, but will. So if you miss doing it during the middle of the actual podcast itself, it's certainly something that you could just build into your into your outro that would be the same every single week so that you're, you're setting that expectation and you don't have to think about it as much. Yes. The last thing I want to add, and I think this is a thing to remember because this is something from, from B school, business school. My teacher was like, your mission statement is a live document. Your business plan is a live document. Your run of show should be a live document. For instance, there's going to come a point like, oh, this go round, for instance, right? This is the first show of the month as a way of sort of giving back to the ECAM community. We could have a section where we highlight our members of the month and congratulate them and thank them. That's something that they mm-hmm. currently do on our show ENN, but that could be something that you would add in if you had a community member of the month that you might put in. Or you want to give props to someone in your community who generated a great tutorial or a great article, a birthday section, uh, shout outs, wedding anniversaries, baby announcements. You can have a place yep. to put that in so that you are giving that thing back to your community. Now, it's something in ECAM we try to do as much as possible is let our community members shine. But as you mm-hmm. are creating your podcast, see if you can't either, you know, Grok some ideas from us or other people where you give your community a chance to shine because the community building is the key. It is the absolute key. Yeah, I think I think that was the last one. I just want to make sure that you remember, make your document so that it's easy for you to be flexible and make adjustments. Yeah. So it will be a living, breathing document as well. And then once you fill out your running show, if you have a guest, remember to send it to the guest. Something mm-hmm. that Evie and Stephanie and Kirk always did oh, yeah. was send us what the running show looks like so that way they know what to expect when expecting. Wait, that's a book. Yeah. And it, it just helps guests understand too, like what the time commitment is. You know, you asked me to say like, sure, I'm happy to join, but they don't necessarily know that they'll be on for 40 minutes or an hour or 10 minutes or so understanding like what the questions are that they'll be asked, how long the show normally is, how long they can expect to be on, whether there's an after show, all of those things are things I guess may not even think to ask, but would really value knowing up front. That's it. I think that's it. That's the sort of the run of show. So yes, in the beginning, start out maybe with some index cards and paper, Ink, you know, just scratch mm-hmm. it down. And then after you start to develop a, a feel for how you like it, Go ahead and put those guys into something that's easily fillable. So Pages works because you can generate it as a fillable PDF. It's something like Illustrator or even Canva. Canva, you will make it as a PDF, download it, and then you have to run it through a PDF fillable type thing like Adobe mm-hmm. Acrobat. Or there's websites that will help you generate a fillable PDF. But hey, mm-hmm. you could also open in like GoodNotes or Notability on an iPad and do it yep. there. So make it easy for yourself and it, just remember to be flexible. And if you miss something, you just fix it later. So last thing about that outro, for instance, if we forgot to say it, once you record it once, if the information hasn't changed, you're able to just pick it up from the last episode and place it back on. When we were at Movement, I'm trying to get my shows together, the team <laughs> over at Captivate told Rich something really incredible, and I didn't get a chance to circle back with them yet, but they have a service on their side. It's called Amy, and it's kind of an AI media something. So for instance, you can take your intro, your middle read, uh, what they call it, mid-roll, and your Mm -hmm. outro, and you can make them dynamic, what that means. This being our sixth recording of the flow which means that next mm-hmm. week's show with aubrey we will hit it. our master seven <laughs> so we did it <laughs> we're um, done we're done see you later <laughs> see you later guys. peace out um, you will be we would be able to like change all the mid rolls to be leap promos because of this month mm-hmm. and if there were any specials coming up for something or black friday or you know ecam 25th yeah. anniversary or whatever we could change yep. that role. It will change on every podcast played that's not downloaded. Like if you play in a player, like, um, I don't know, Overcast or something, as opposed to download the yep. episode, it will pop all the way through, which is incredible because it allows awesome. you to have a elastic spot, if you will, 
And we're going to dig more into learning how to do that <laughs> so that we can do yeah. that for us. There you go. The one last thing that I want to say before we jump over into live Q&A My is that part. as you, <laughs> as you, and we hope you join us next time. So if you're listening and you're not here live with us, you can catch us live 12 p.m. <laughs> on Tuesdays on YouTube Eastern. But the last thing that I want to say is that really, really, as you're building out your show flow and you're getting, you know, comfortable with doing it regularly, it's following the same process is to make sure that you, again, think through what you want, you, what you may want to do with that content as far as repurposing goes. So, you know, again, the structure that we have is really focused on having this live studio audience, but we don't want to antagonize any of our listeners who are not here with us live. So we don't take any questions from our live audience, even though you're all sitting here watching and, and we see your questions coming through. We leave that to the beginning and the end so that it's easy for us to trim that content off, to be able to only get the content that matters to the people who want to listen it in the way they want to listen to it. You know, we're not going to put live questions on screen or, or we're not going to make it really hard and make an episode that's all really super visual when we have podcast listeners who aren't actually watching us. So think through some of that, especially as it comes to the structure that you might not want to take live questions or kind of behind the scenes stuff in the middle of the episode, because it'll be much harder for you to, to trim that out and to edit it. So correct. Correct. I think there, the way you can do it is if your people have, uh, again, we do have this, uh, it's just no one does it yet. Everyone does it live, which is cool. You can say, if you have a question and you want to get it on the podcast, please send us an email at flow at ecam.com. That's F-L-O-W at E-C-A-M-M.com. So you can mm -hmm. preload your questions. It says, I believe what normally happens with the community is the question comes to them while we are live. As which they're is watching. why yeah, we do exactly. the live taping, which is yep. why live video first is the move, people. This is the secret mm -hmm. sauce. Like you're literally finding out that secret sauce is basically ketchup and mayo mixed with relish and <laughs> McDonald's. It's easier than you think. Yeah. It's easier than you think. So because the questions do come up at the time, like Runny had a very, very good question. Even without putting it on screen, I'm able to work it into the conversation without yep. reading the whole question. So that's some of the stuff that you'd be able to do. But yes, people can preload their questions. And in that case, I think it is cool because if you preload the questions, we could do question of the week, of the week, of the week. Hey, I got a question. <laughs> you know, you'd be able to do some kind of cool promo. And then the person yep. who got the question of the week, you'd be able to give them a shout out, let people know about their show or whatever. So there's some way you can gamify that if you would love to have that as part of your thing. Right now, we're just lucky we have a very active studio audience. And that gives us time to <laughs> sort of do it live here on the show. So I, I think that's a very, very valid point there, Miss Kate. Thank you. <laughs> I think that's all I had as far as genius, uh, genius points. I think, yeah, like anything else, Post -vacation it just genius takes time points. to think it through. <laughs> Post, -vac Post vacation genius points on this cold day is, is all the same advice we give you every single week is to take some time, think it through, scope it out, plan it out, write it out, and then do it. <laughs> Stop yes. overthinking it and just do the, it. The main thing is to just start. I have been sitting yep. here over the last couple of days trying to generate an acronym for start that has mm. to do with our video first podcasting thing. I have it written down on my paper, some other things. So yeah, it's just kind of funny. And I, I'm glad you mentioned that part about repurposing because that might even be something that you put in your show flow to remember to get those. Mm -hmm. So for instance, you might want to be able to tease the next week's episode and you know yep. that you want to keep that with inside 90 seconds so that you can generate that as a reel or maybe the platform mm -hmm. you use is YouTube. So you might want to keep that with inside 60 seconds, 59 actually. So you want to work that in and say, hey, as a reminder, guys, don't forget next week, we're going to have a special guest. Aubrey Howe Robinson is going to come on and then she's going to be talking to us about her uh, podcast, which is really cool. It's called The Morning Minute or something like that. See, now I forgot what it's called. Aubrey, sorry, don't shoot me. <laughs> so <laughs> um, you'd be able to kind of like rock that out. Man, it, it's oh, it's a minute ish. That's what it's called. It's the super funny because it's not quite a minute. It's a minute ish morning it's a minute -ish. motivational minute ish. That's what it is. There we go. 
I got it out. Anyway, you'd be able to put that in your show. So you set those up. And, you, and again, you know exactly where you can clip. This has been another episode of The Flow. And what we do want to remind you is that there is a live taping. And if you ever like to come to the live taping to be able to slide your questions in and just be part of the fun. I mean, we have like 35 people rocking right now and they're already throwing their questions, which we hang around and answer those after. You can always do that by going over to our YouTube channel. We're Ecamm Live on YouTube or youtube.com slash Ecamm Live and you will find us every Tuesday at 12 p.m. Eastern. Also, this recording comes out a week later, so you kind of get the information with a week head start. That's the best way. And again, mm -hmm. if you'd like to send us questions, you can at flow, F-L-O-W at ecamm.com, flow at ecamm.com. That's for questions. The best place to find us is flow.ecamm.com in order to get to the podcast getting. There's Apple and Spotify and Google and Stitcher and about 3,100 other places you can find us. So go over to that master page there. And then all you have to do is just remember it is flow.ecam.com. Just remember to join us every week and you can become part of the flow. Any last words, Katie? I'm just, I'm, I'm thinking as you're saying that we need like a fun term for like, we have the Ecam fan, but we need like, we need like a flow community nickname. We're going to have to think about it. If anyone has genius nicknames for what we should call all y'all who are sitting here <laughs> hanging out with us, let us know. <laughs> we some bad moflos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can be some bad moflos. Oh, stop. Stop. Uh... <laughs> oh my God. This is fun. This is fun. Guys, appreciate you. Let's get ready to fire over into our Q&A section. And uh, we'll see you next week here on The Flow. Bye, everyone. Bye.